Hey Patreon supporters and thank you so much for your donation towards helping to make Windows on Windows even better. As promised, in this special episode, I aim to give you an overview of how an episode of Windows on Windows comes together, including where I get the builds, how I find out what features they include, how I script and plan for each episode, the machine setup I use for virtualizing the builds and recording and editing the footage scene, and how I use YouTube's analytics feature to improve future episodes. A little disclaimer before we start, all of the information I'm going to share with you is current as of January 2018, but of course may change in the future. Also, all websites mentioned will be linked to in the video description below. So with all that said, let's start. This special episode of Windows on Windows will be split into five parts as mentioned previously. These parts will be where I get the builds, how I find out what features the builds include, how I script and plan for each episode, my machine setup for virtualizing the builds and recording and editing the footage scene, how I use YouTube's analytics feature to improve future episodes. Let's now delve straight into the first section and talk about where I get the builds of Windows shown in the episodes. Most builds of Windows can be found on the Beta Archive FTP server. However, this is now closed to free signups. Luckily, as I signed up many years ago now, I do still have access. However, a much easier way to obtain Windows builds is to simply go to winworldpc.com and click on the library link. It's extremely easy to navigate and in addition to Windows, it also has in its collection various builds of other operating systems such as MS-DOS, macOS and OS2. Simply click on the release version you wish to explore builds for, for example Windows Vista, then choose as desired. Additionally, product keys are usually also provided in order to make the whole process that little bit easier. The download will usually be as a 7z zip file. Simply save or open the file, extract the ISO image contained within, and then hook this up to a virtual machine, or if you're feeling really daring, real hardware. Before we take a look at how I virtualize the builds themselves, let's first look at how to find information on them. There are many places online that are great for finding out all about pre-release versions of Windows. A couple of examples are the Beta Archive Wiki, which has information on builds of all Windows releases, as well as Paul Thurrett's Supersite for Windows, which again has information relevant to builds of all Windows releases, including many screenshots plus video clips of keynotes and demos and more, at various developer conferences all attended by Paul himself. It should be noted that this website is no longer operated by Paul himself and not all these pages are currently available on the website as it stands. However, much more of Paul's information can be accessed by using the Internet Wayback Machine, which will allow you to see old pages and old content that is no longer maintained or made available on the current website. Additionally to these sources, if Windows Vista, i.e. Windows Code of Longhorn is your thing, then check out chris123nt.com and longhorn.ms for lots of useful information on hidden features and tutorials for getting the various incarnations of Aeroglass transparency working in virtualization software. On some occasions, as well as using websites to find information on builds, I will make contact with members of the community who I know are knowledgeable on them. One such person is Melcher from Longhorn.ms, whose knowledge of many pre-reset Windows codename Longhorn build features has been invaluable. Another contact is Ken Hanna, who has done so much work on reconstructing Windows codename Neptune's Activity Centers feature, and was kind enough to share a lot of this work with me for use in my Windows codename Neptune video. Whilst researching a build, I make notes of all the relevant and interesting information I come across so that I can explore it myself before recording an episode, and also so that I can refer back to this information while I am recording. For episodes that contain a lot of information in a short space of time, such as series overview videos, an entire script is written to improve information legibility, as well as to minimise my stress levels. I currently run the 64-bit edition of Windows 7 Ultimate on an Intel Core i7-7700K CPU running at 4.2GHz and with 16GB of RAM. This provides me with plenty of processing power and memory space to virtualize the builds. 
Note, however, that this machine is only a couple of months old, and that before this, all my work was done on an old Vista era Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 2.4GHz CPU and 8GB of RAM. The virtualization software I currently use is VMware Workstation 12.5, which works well for most NT releases of Windows, and Windows 9X, not so much. To record the footage, I use Cam Studio, which is free and open source and highly customizable. Editing is done using Adobe Premiere Elements, most recently version 18. A lot of recorded content is discarded at this stage, and the rest is usually heavily edited in order to improve episode running time. Any omissions or mistakes are added or corrected, and a test render is made. This is then checked one final time for information accuracy, as well as to ensure for example that the audio levels are okay. Once everything checks out, it's off to YouTube. As part of its creator studio, YouTube provides an analytics section that shares statistical information about the videos you have uploaded, such as watch time, average view duration, numbers of views and estimated earnings. It also provides a top videos ranking, which is a great way to see at a glance which videos are doing well, and to consider if there is anything about these videos that could be used again to improve the chance of future videos performing just as well. The top videos ranking is more useful when combined with another analytics feature, which is the ability to select a timescale to display statistics for. Selecting lifetime from this list, it's clear to see that my Windows Codename Neptune video is by far the most popular. Switching to the audience retention section gives another level of insight into how the videos are performing. So if we look at percentage watch time for example, we can see that those of my videos that keep viewers watching for longer are generally the development overview videos for each series, as well as shorter videos such as What is Windows Neptune, which is a summary video of the main interesting features contained in Windows Codename Neptune. Switching to traffic sources, we can see that the majority of video views come from users clicking on them as suggested videos, which really highlights the impact and the brilliant design of SC's thumbnail template, which he specially designed for Windows on Windows, so thank you Noah. Switching to subscribers, we can see that I have lost a total of 315 subscribers from closed accounts, sad face. Anyway, there is so, so much more information in YouTube analytics and there are plenty of dedicated videos all about that all over YouTube, so I'm not going to go into any more detail about any of that right now, but suffice it to say that it's a really, really handy feature to help you keep track of how your content is performing once you have released it into the big, wide world of YouTube. And that is my whistle-stop tour of how a Windows on Windows episode comes together. So I hope that you've learned something new. I hope that you've found this interesting. Feel free to ask me any questions. You can ask me on Discord, on YouTube itself, or here on Patreon. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.